hey guys, Richard Tanner here. I am the uh, owner of Buckshort Production and the mind behind such hits as Frank and Thug and this new one coming out over here called Once Upon a Nightmare. Uh, I'm coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia right now uh, where we are on lockdown, of course, for this quarantine as many of you are as well. And basically, I'm here today to try to give a little bit back to all of you guys. So all this boredom, we can still feel connected. It's uh, <laughs> been a rough go about it, I think, especially with a lot of the artists out there. I was lucky enough to have a day job that wasn't a gig culture kind of thing, so I'm still making it, but a lot of my friends aren't. And that's what today's about, is giving back to the musicians and giving back to the people who like the musicians, can't get out, can't get out to see, you know, a movie and all this stuff. It's, it's rough going for everyone, but... We're really glad you're here watching this, you know, the rock down, lock down, lock down, rock down, switch it up, whatever you want to say, it's going to work as long as you're here seeing this right now. Um, I'm very happy to be part of Metal Babe Mayhem doing this. I think it's a great idea. It's really cool to have a festival from your home, especially the fact that I look so nice and dressed up and I swear to God I'm wearing pajama pants underneath. Hmm, why not? It's quarantine, baby. It's fun. Um, I am... A filmmaker first and foremost but I'm also a writer uh, so this is kind of my bread and butter being locked in isolation is giving me a lot of time to do a lot of stuff uh, so today something I'm going to do for you guys is I am going to give you a reading from my newest book that I'm part of uh, edited by Joe Mo. it's called Georgia Screeches it's a Days of the Dead anthology from the convention and uh, I actually have two stories published in here and I'm going to read you one that's a flash fiction uh, it's called It's Raining Again. I did write it several years ago, but <laughs> it's a very depressing piece, which I think sums up most of our feelings now. But remember, even in the darkest of times, something, something, Dumbledore said it better than I did. But get the art out. Get the emotions in there, even if it is depressing in these times. It's worth it. So here we go. It's Raining Again by Richard Tanner. The rain poured onto the dark streets of Atlanta. Even at night, the streets would still steam up. It was always hot here. The billows of steam create a never-ending swamp, or so it would seem. It was just that this swamp swarmed with big buildings and urban culture instead of old oak trees and gators. How much difference is there really between the two, though? I tell you, they both believe in respect, both believe in money, they both love their hometowns. Born and raised in the backwoods as opposed to being born and raised in back alleys. It's about all the difference. Kids in the woods, they play with snakes. While them in the cities, they prefer playing with needles they find. Them country folk, they shoot for fun. Eh, then again, so do them city folk. Back before the drought, it had been raining on and off for a solid month, so it would seem. You know, that was the thing about Georgia then. If you didn't like the weather, you just had to wait 15 minutes or so. It would change. Not that many people complained, because they was just happy to have a coolness in the air when they sat on the porches or sidewalks. The kids loved it, because their feet wouldn't burn when they walked down the streets to see a friend. The men loved the green grass that grew in the yard. They knew a competition was going on against their neighbors. Even though it was never unspoken, and the winner never said. The churchgoers, they hear stories told to Noah, while the kids look through windows, Praying they won't see someone float by. It was a rainy night in Georgia that night. The streets still seemed. At one in the morning, no one wants to be on the streets of Atlanta. Not the cops, not the homeless, not even the criminals. They just doing their jobs. It was still faintly raining as one man looked over his shoulder while turning between the tall buildings. It was too dark and too late for anybody to care about him. As long as uh, he didn't care about them. They were safe. His thoughts and cares were only for the rain. Slowly started talking to himself, just barely audible as he walked. It's raining again. It's always raining. Shook the water off his head, only to have more rain take its place. No matter how far I go or how far I walk, it never stops. It pours on me. It's supposed to make things wash away, them cleansing waters, but never for me. He was starting to sound a bit crazy, his emotions getting the best of him, 
The rain only makes all this pain and suffer dig deeper into my skin, making it hide its face from the water, take shelter in my very soul. Seems like the only thing rain can do is hide my tears. And oh, that man was right. The rain came down so hard, it was almost impossible to see his face at all, let alone tears. Nobody can see me cry. It's not my place in this world to show my agony. I'm supposed to be strong. Ain't nothing can harm me. He was screaming now, thrashing his fist about like a feature speaking of hell, but he never took his hands out of his pockets. What am I without this, though? Another face in the crowd of wounded travelers begging for a way out? The man stopped talking, hung his head low, and walked. He walked down a road he had never seen. A final whisper escaped him as a single bubble in the swamp of a city. It's always raining. As that one man walked through the alleys between the tall buildings, ranting to no one and to everyone, the rain picked up. When the weather changed, it didn't always change for the better. There was a gunshot that night on the rainy streets of Lena, and yet the streets still steamed. That's my flash fiction for you guys. That's It's Raining Again, part of Georgia Screeches, uh, Days of the Dead Anthology. That's available on Amazon. Uh, tons of great writers in here, all of them, the cool thing about this, all of them based in Georgia. Uh, they're actually making an anthology for each state that Days of the Dead goes to, uh, and just getting a lot of the uh, special people in it, and I like it. There's uh, people like Jezebel Annett, uh, Jack Manister, uh, even the Pink Power Ranger from Lightspeed Rescue did a story of this, which I lighted up finding that out about, because, you know, I'm a 90s kid. Um... I hope all of you are being safe, practicing social distancing, and washing your hands, doing the stuff that's obvious. Uh, I know it's scary, but we're all going to get through this. And I do want you to, you know, reach out to your artist friends, help support them wherever you can. Heck, if you want to support me, i got a movie coming out soon. Uh, you can hit me up at facebook.com slash buckshortproductions. Or, you know, Twitter at a buckshortprod and Instagram buckshortprod. And then also my website, uh... Uh, BuckshortProductions.com. Um, pretty easy to get in touch with because I am just an internet freak, especially right now because there's nothing else to do. So check out all of your friends. Remember to support art because there's nothing else that matters as much as that right now. Well, that and health. But, you know, I like to say art's more important because that's what I can do. Anyway, listen to some good bands today. Talk to some friends. Have fun. This is a party. Go have a drink. I'm going to have plenty. Trust me, it's going to be great, and I'll be here most of the day, too, and shout out if you see me on any of these, uh, you know, little threads on there, talk to me. I'd love to hear from you. So, I am going to leave you guys with one other thing, though. I'm going to drop a special clip just for you guys from my hit movie. Even I haven't seen it yet, because someone else is editing it. I'm going to get you a clip from my movie, Once Upon a Nightmare, starring Aaron Brown, Jezebel Annette, and uh, John Devlin. So, look for that after this. Later, guys.
to whom this may concern. I'd say that I write this under some sane mindset and my own free will, but I am not sure that describes me anymore. I decided to kill my wife, the love of my life. I can't take her anymore. She is soulless. With the way those kids eat. Ugh, I won't even have crumbs soon. You've got to get rid of them. I don't care what you did with them. Give them to your parents, they can afford it. Put them up for adoption. Hell, leave them out in the woods for all I care. I was supposed to be your number one priority. I understand that everyone has their faults. But she honestly wants me to abandon my kids. I've never been a great father, but I refuse to be a terrible one. I've done some research, and I figured out how to cut her brake lines without her noticing.